Hi, welcome to the Gainsplainer. I'm Jeff the Gainsplainer and today I'm Gainsplaining Trade on the Tigris. In the game of Trade on the Tigris, you are working to trade things with the other players to get points. You have two different types of markers. These ones, which are culture tokens, you start with three of them. These ones, which are barbarian tokens, these are bad. You also start with three of them and you're playing the game to try to gain as many of these as you can. They are called point tokens. Everyone starts on the zero space of both the government track and the religion track. As you gain cards, they will move you in either direction and you are then able to take cards above or below where you are. So at the very start of the game, everyone will be drawing from these two decks. Each player will draw two cards from this deck and two cards from this deck. Now out of those four cards, he will choose one of these two to hang on to. Uh, just for ease, we'll do that one. So he's going to keep that one and discard that one. And then he chooses one of these two to hang on to. And he might keep this one and discard that one. Once everyone has selected which cards they are keeping, they turn them over and those cards will usually get to join the ranks of these cards that are in front of them. Then the cards that they've discarded get thrown to the bottom of each pile. They should be shuffled so we don't know what order they're going in on the bottom, but in a smaller play game you won't get through to those cards. In a large player game it probably matters which order they go into or shuffling so we don't know, so there's a bit of randomness there. That was called the development phase. If you've chosen a card that has the lightest color, uh, I think it's beige, on there, then immediately you'll get to do that just the once. So this card says to discard a worker, which is one of the starting five, and then gain one merchant. And this one acts as the merchant, so you've got two merchants and four workers there. This one is red, so it won't happen just yet. We now move on to the production phase. So as you can tell, this game is played in phases. Uh, everyone's doing this stuff at the same time. So it will enable you to play up to the six players if you need to. In the production phase, you're drawing cards. So these four, which have that little mark on it, mean that you're drawing from that deck, which is the basic goods. Each player also has one of these, or as this player has just managed to pick up an extra one, that marker means that you're taking goods from the import goods. So this player will now take four of the basic goods, one, two, three, four, and two of the import goods into his hand. Everyone does the same thing. It doesn't really matter what order everyone does that in. Once everyone has those cards in hand, we then start the trade phase. So what does this look like? First thing, set a timer on this. This can run too long if you don't have a timer. Uh, on your first couple of times through, I suggest to maybe not use a timer but kind of guess at it, but then having a five minute solid timer can be a good thing. It can make, it, make people rush to decisions uh, or not. But what now happens is I've just picked up a whole bunch of cards that look like this. There's information at the top and information at the bottom. What I'm trying to do is get multiples of the same card. You'll notice that there's markers on the side. If I have only one of these cards at the end of this round, I get zero points for that card. If, however, I have two of them, I'll get one point. Three, two points, four, four points, five, six points, six, seven points, and seven, eight points. If you have more than seven, you'll only get eight points for them. So looking at my hand, I'll hang on to these for a second, I've got two flax, a fish, and a clay. So what I'm going to be trying to do is get more flax. If I get more flax, then obviously these cards are worth more points for trading them in. The other thing I have is one lapis lazuli and one spices. Please forgive me if I've mispronounced that. And what they do is if I turn in one of them, I'll get one point. But if I can turn in six of them, I'll get 11 points. So it's worthwhile doing that. Now, because I'm able to only get two cards, I could be trying to trade things away to build up that lot or to build up that. And this is really the game. This is what you're trying to do. 
remembering that you can hang on to three of them. So if I manage to trade away a few things, but I don't manage to trade everything, I could go, okay, I think I'm going to get more of these. And I think that I'll get more clay and put them face down underneath your board. So what that means is I can now, next time around we get to the trade phase, I can grab those three cards back into my hand to help me with my trades. Other things that you can use for trades, are you can trade away any markers or even points that you have. The only thing you're not allowed to trade is development certificates, which are these cards. So you can't trade them. Some of the cards will tell you to pick up a certain numbered card from this deck. So you go through this, stay in order, you don't shuffle these, you go through, find the numbered card, and grab it, so say I've been told to pick up 20, I'll grab number 20 and put that back. Now I'm allowed to trade away that card if I wish, it's marked the same on both sides, so everyone can see what that card is. I can trade that card away. The problem is that if I trade that card away, on the next turn around, that card will come back to me because I still have the card, the trading certificate up there that says, to take that card. So wherever it happens to be on the table, I take that back into my hand. And that will need to be actioned each turn, unless I put it into my warehouse down the bottom of the three. Now the other piece of information that is on those cards, is there something on the bottom? If there's a picture of democracy, or dictatorship, or Asher, or Marduk, on the bottom, it means you're moving one in the direction of that. So if you were to turn in this card and another card that had, uh, say, a dictatorship on it, your pawn would stay in the same spot. Whereas if you turned in three or four cards that had that same marking on the bottom, you would move your pawn, however many spaces, that direction. Because I've only got one in my hand where I turn in, I only move that one. But by moving outwards, it allows you to gain cards that are harder to get to, or harder to use, or a better for you to use. So once I get to here, I'm now able to use cards from this deck or this deck. When I get to here, I can use that deck, that deck, or that deck. If I've moved this one over here, I can use this deck or that deck. And the same happens on both sides. The other thing you'll notice with the cards left in my hand is there's two pictures of culture, which just means that when I play those cards, I will gain the two culture tokens onto my board. And we'll see why that is important very soon. Once you've done all your trades, we'll go to a mercantile phase, which is basically just turning in these for points and for those things I was just talking about. Uh, so if this was what I turned in, my marker there would go to one because I've moved the democracy. I'll get two of the cultures, which I've already taken. And then I get one point, which is one of these for those two. And this one's worth nothing to me. They then get discarded. If I had this in my hand as well, I would choose between moving towards dictatorship or democracy. Because if I started the trek towards democracy, I will take democracy, which pushes him to there. Once everyone has done that phase and taken the things that they need to take, we move into the civic phase. The civic phase, firstly, we resolve any of the cards that have the red marking on it. So this card, each opponent gains one barbarian. One, two. Once all of that has happened, you've gone through all the red cards. The next thing is Barbarian Attacks and Golden Age. They only happen in rounds two, three, four, and five. Whoever has the most Barbarians is going to get attacked. This player and this player both have four Barbarians, which means each of those players would now lose four points. So you're basically the person who has the most Barbarians on their board gets attacked by those Barbarians, and you lose the number of points that is equal to the number of barbarians that you have. Once that has happened, you then discard your barbarians, so you've only got two left. Assuming we're on phase two or round two, we'll go to a golden age, which means that whoever has the most of these culture tokens instantly takes an extra development card. So the way this works is that this player has the most once again, we reduce down to two, same as with the Barbarians. And then this player would choose, because it's on this point round, it's round two, we're choosing a level one card. So with him over over on the Democracy, he might want to choose from Dictatorship. He could take from Asha or Marduk. 
or democracy if he wished to. Uh, say he takes dictatorship, he'd take two cards, have a look at them, and he might take this one. There's a whole bunch of writing on them for things that happen, so he's going to hang on to this one, and that one gets discarded. That card that he just took because it was a golden age will get hung on to until he takes the next set of cards, which are in the first age. And then this gets added to those and will come out when he plays that. At this point, this marker now gets moved on to the next spot. If you're on round seven, which instead of having that extra card, you take seven more points for having the most tokens. If you're on round, set, round five, that's the end of the game. If you're on the other rounds, we proceed further forward. Some development cards, some of these ones, uh, do some stuff after the end of the game or at the end of the game. This is the point, so at the end of round five, where those ones are actually action. And then we literally add up all of the points on these tokens. And whoever has the most points wins the game. And that's pretty much it. Trade on the Tigress is a relatively straightforward game. Please go on and watch my games play to get an idea of how the game actually plays now that you've got an idea of the rules. If you have any comments or suggestions, please write them below. If you have any games that you would like to be gamesplained, please shoot me an email at thegamesplainer at gmail.com. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at thegamesplainer to keep up to date with the games I'm playing. Subscribe to my videos to keep up to date with the games that I'm gamesplaining. And until next time, enjoy gaming.